For traders that have emailed and asked, the links for the free downloads are in the description box below. Just click on the link or copy and paste and put that in your browser. The four-step method to high performance trading and the seven-step daily routine for high performance traders create the rituals, the mindset, and the winning attitude to master the markets. Bulletproof yourself with your daily routine and your habits. Force yourself to be getting better, 1% better every single day. How good can you get, traders? Again, the free downloads, the links are down below. They're both free courses. Let's get started. Good day, traders. Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Today, a short video on day one, uh, Monday. New week and news on the calendar this week. We have quite a bit of news uh, each day in the U.S. session, except for Thursday. Uh, today's Monday. We had a 10 o'clock ISM manufacturing. For traders who were trading in Asia or London, possibly had uh, some reasonably decent opportunities. Uh, me coming to the screen North American time and recognizing that there was 10 o'clock news, I pretty much... Uh, didn't bother coming to the screen till just before the New York Open, assuming that there would be, uh, when I looked at the charts earlier this morning, just uh, looking at that and assuming that there would be probably a couple of hours of setting up. Uh, and because it's day one, uh, there was opportunities on some of the pairs in London. And uh, we'll look at probably what I consider to be uh, the two best trades, one on the Canadian dollar, one on oil. Um only because I don't trade the news itself. But just we'll skim through and have a look at the euro. Talked about, uh, again, identifying a peak formation low heading into the new week. So possibly Thursday is a reset for traders that are emailing and asking about that. It's really simple. Uh, you know, as we head into a new week, we obviously made new highs on Friday. And so the most recent peak formation low was on Thursday heading into the Monday. And so I'm just looking at where is the peak formation highs and peak formation lows. So we have peak formations on the euro itself above Friday's high, sorry, Thursday's high. And again, the market closed below the open. And so therefore, these peak formations potentially may end up being the high of the week heading into the new week. And uh, at this stage, we have traded up in Asia. Put a peak formation high in place before dropping down, retesting that low. We had relative equal lows heading into the Europe London window. We hit the high of the day, so again went vertical, which tells us our peak formations are up. So we have peak formation highs and peak formation lows from Thursday and Friday. So again, this previous day's high level, as you'll notice here, becomes the trapped volume on day two on our way up into the high of the week. So again, peak formation low in the US session, right below the previous day's high. They contain the volume underneath, put peak formations down before continuing. And then Friday had peak formations above the high of the day before it closed underneath. <clears throat> so Asia peak formation into the peak formation. As soon as I see that, I'm looking for possibly three peaks up, and this is my target. And again, peak formation high in London. My thesis would be I'd be looking for a retest back up for a short trade down, a retest into the peak formation for a short trade down. Now, when we head into the U.S. session, we are trading down into the peak formation low. Peak formation. This made a peak formation low at the end of the 12 candle window and they proceeded to trade back into the low. For traders who want me to use different charts, um, replay and trading view and different colored mouses and everything else, just go to your charts and study this. Don't worry about what I do. This is my video to show you to follow the process. And then you have to master the process so that when you go to the screen, you can execute. So peak formation low, they go back into the low. So now my thesis is they're going vertical because this is a peak formation low retest, one push, two pushes, break of structure, higher highs, right at the New York Open, one, two, three. Only problem with today is 
we had news on the calendar. So peak formation, low three pushes, explosive 50 pip move back to the high of the London session. But I want you to study this pattern. On the days that we don't have news, guess what? That's a trade. And there is your playbook trade set up for three pushes into the low on the euro today. And just to demonstrate that this can show up anywhere, we'll look at Friday again on the GY, pound yen. Peak formation high in London. They sold it off the end of the London window. They came down and put in a peak formation low. They traded back into that low in the gap time. Again, peak formation low. Broke structure ever so subtly, but still higher highs. And for traders have asked, again, when it's a reversal trade, I look for a break in structure because at this stage they've broken structure on the downside. They're trending. If I want a reversal, I would like to see a break in structure on the inside, which they did. And then we get our 1, 2, 3 New York Open just 15 minutes prior, but same pattern. One push, two push, three pushes, pin hammer, explosive, 50 plus pips. And then again, the one, two pullback and the continuation trade back up towards the high of the day. So again, it's the pattern, the pattern, the pattern. And just coming back to this pair. So this bar, this pin hammer closed on the new. So this vertical move, although some traders may have taken that, I, 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 don't, I didn't trade that. Uh, again, I like to see a move after the news. We'll talk about a couple of scenarios that, that um, traders may have played out. But that's just the pattern that I'm emphasizing today, day one. We're still going higher. Uh, we're inside of Friday's high-low. It's, it's Monday, day one. This possibly may be a peak formation reset low on Friday. And we're inside. So on an inside day, I look for three peaks. We got that heading into the gap in the London session. For a nice 50 pip move, we got three pushes down, three peaks down inside of the peak formation low of the U.S., but news was obviously on the calendar. Uh, that made that trade uh, at that particular time uh, one that I would not take. Now, there may be traders who are following through on this or who got in anyways, first bounce, uh, that sort of scenario. So the first bounce after the news, of course, is the continuation trade. I will take the first bounce. Uh, and this was good for 25 plus. First bounce again, a new 15 minute cycle, 15 minutes down into the news breakout, the explosive move, and then the continuation trade. Smashing traders who are counter trending this on a day one. A day one range expansion back inside of Friday's range, coming out of a short squeeze. So again, a day one trade, I would take this and lock it in and get off the screen. I'll talk about uh, two trades that I did that on. Japanese yen, again, uh, we had our peak formation low on Wednesday, Thursday, the three peaks inside. So again, you'll notice no higher low of the day is broken. So I go and look for three peaks. The next day, the same scenario applies. We had three peaks on Thursday, and then we get similar scenario where they came down. So you'll notice the peak formations are traded back up into so that expands the range on the upside. We can call this the master pattern, whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter. Consolidation, they break the high. Three pushes down for the explosive continuation trade into the close of the session. We make new highs on day one Monday. Peak formation high at the high of the week. Peak formation low in the gap. Going up, one push, two push, three pushes and a retest for a gap time M pattern, peak formation high. Our peak formations are up, which way is our thesis for the move heading into the US session? We broke structure, we broke the higher low of the Europe window. Again, you can see the on my data, the little space, again, uh, something that I could not trade. Thesis pop up in a broken down market, there's news pin hammer, but we had a news candle right on that close of that pin hammer. So obviously again, not tradable, but the pattern is still intact. Peak formation high, M structure broken down market. We need to see a one, two, three on a normal given day, New York open. This was a New York open trade for 50 pips straight down. Again, notice three levels of rise, taking traders 
higher and higher into the high of the day without really going any higher but making higher lows trapping volume breaking structure the pop-up for the short trade in the upper part of the 100 pip box a one two three new york open explosive 50 pip trade the british pound we had a peak formation low on wednesday day two thursday day three on friday and we had a break in structure and then a pullback into the close of the day this is our textbook setup for a mid move continuation pattern so they instead of a normal third level trade where they break back up and retest and break down again into the new day to roll over this market closes up high peak formation high in the in the beginning of the day prior to the Asian market session and then a explosive reversal locking in our low of the day underneath our peak formation low of Friday so you'll notice the higher peak formation in the US session forms our new low of the day now I had several traders email me and said I don't understand how can that be the low of the day if the day's not complete and it's inside and everything else the US session is trading it made a peak formation high it continued to trade back up into that high and broke the high in the US session. This higher low then becomes our new reference point for the high, or sorry, the low of the US session, meaning the higher low of the day. They broke the high, that higher low now becomes our new reference point, and, and lo and behold, we get one push, two pushes, and a creeping trend down into the low of the day in the gap time. We'll zoom in on this. This is a 15 minute chart. An engulfment. But you'll notice again, it's the timing of everything that happens. The timing is critical. We're at the low into where our double, or sorry, our triple bottom reversal happened on Friday into the US session. This peak formation low then could be our reset for a day one heading into a Monday, a new week, day one, day two, trend day, day two, in line with the peak formation. They take traders back down into the peak formation, engulfment, heading into the open of the Europe session. So this starts the move prior to the Europe window. Now, when they move the market, listen to this. If they move the market prior to the session, they're trapping volume away from the intended direction they're going to go. Look what they did on Friday. They moved the market. They trapped the volume down low for the explosive reversal. They moved the market up and then get traders shorting it right into the open of the session, shorting the market down into the low of the day that was made in the London equity hour at zeros. London reverses and comes up and they trade back down into the peak formation low. They come down and trade down into the peak formation low in a day where they've made a peak formation high, which is a higher high, except they're shorting it down into the low. Creeper up, break in structure, okay? Break in structure, higher highs, back to the lower high of the London session. One, two, three, into the New York Open. Again, news calendar, the explosive retest of the high of the day. Where do I get in? Where do I get in? Well, when there's news on the calendar, the only thing that I can do is trade a first bounce if there's an explosive move. We get a pullback, which again comes back to timing. So if I'm paying attention to the time of day, we've had a news calendar uh, release at 10 o'clock New York time. 15 minutes after that news candle, we have a market that has exploded vertically and pulled back. And then our new 15 minute bar starts. We come back to numbers to 50, an inside bar and an engulfment. This is a first bounce entry for me. This is a first bounce and only re-entry for me I only take the first bounce so traders may have gotten in and traded the news I will not do that for every trade that you get right on the news there will be a day where they run through your stop and the best fill you'll get is 50 pips on your stop loss 
and you say, what, I had a 15 pip stop, except that they'll run it for 50 minimum because they pull all the bids and offers out of the market. Your best fill will be 50 pips. You'll have slippage, and then you're going to be standing there like a deer in headlights wondering what happened because they can get away with that, and there's nothing you can do. So I don't trade the news. I don't need to. There's plenty of great trades. Why do you want to try and take exceptionally high-risk situations just to make some money or get some pips. When when here's a clear cut, clean, easy retest of the high for 25, if you were trading the pound, some traders may have re-entered this again, knowing that this was potentially a day two runner, sorry, day two trend trade, but also a day one runner. So come back and look, they trade down into the low for the short squeeze. But a day one runner on a Monday, it's day two in our cycle, but day one runner, I've said this repeatedly, and I will say it again today. If you counter trend a market that's potentially a day one runner on a Monday, be prepared that it may not go very far or that you may end up be shorting or counter trending a market that is still now in the process of expanding the range on a Monday because we've talked about Monday, Tuesday, 80% of the time, set the high and the low for the week. Now, to me, the Canadian dollar was probably by far the cleanest, easiest trade setup. So again, we had our Monday, Tuesday trade high of the week on Wednesday coming down from the high of the week. They three pushes into the low and the reversal on Thursday. So we had our three pushes and reversal short squeeze on Thursday. They're inside. So what do we look for on inside? We look for three peaks. We got our three peaks later in the day. Some traders uh, shorted the high of the day. Some traders bought the low of the day. New York open for the continuation for 50 plus back to the high of the day. But we had our inside day. The market then proceeded to trade inside again. And so on an inside day, we look for three peaks. The market Came down and made a low in Asia, traded up into the peak formation. We're an inside day. So again, low probability situation when it's inside after a reversal. Technically, we're on a day two from the peak formation low of the week reversal. So again, we had volume that, that came outside of Tuesday's low and reversed. That reversal volume now becomes our reference point for our day one going the other direction. So again, the market came down below the blue line, Monday's low, that's Tuesday's low, sorry, and then reversed and proceeded to march back up for three peaks and stayed inside. So then the thesis would be that we potentially might be looking for three peaks down, down for a move back to the high of the week, which I talked about in the video on Friday. They broke structure. Heading into the U.S. session, and again, think about what's happening here. One push, two push, three pushes into the third hour, right? They're shorting it down into the peak formation low for the explosive short squeeze into the end of the day and the end of the session. So heading into today's market, we had a market that broke down through the higher low in the rollover time through the beginning of the day, and you'll notice again volume trapped up above double zeros, right? One push, two push, three pushes at the high of the week. But this move down in Asia solidifies that. So again, coming back to Thursday's high, we talk about, you really need to think about three things that markets do. They break out, they pull back, and they trend. They break out, they pull back, and they reverse. That's false break reversal. Marginal new high, marginal new low. Or they break out, pull back, and stay sideways in the trading range, which basically is what we saw on Thursday and for the, for the most part on Friday until late in the session. You hear me emphasize this over and over again. Do not counter trend the peak formation. Your job heading into a session is to identify the peak formations and then have a thesis for either a retest into a peak formation, right? So... Just in simple terms, if we have a peak formation that establishes itself on the upside 
and we our thesis is that we're going down, I need to retest into that peak formation direction. It doesn't have to be right beside it for a continuation down. That would be called our M structure, right? And in some cases, we can go three three levels. Asia, London, New York to the high of the day for an extended M structure at the high of the day, which is the move in the first hour back to the high of the day or the New York Open or the London session, whatever that is, back to the high of the day to give us our extended M structure. Either or, in a broken down market, we will have a market that continues to break down and that retest into the direction of the peak formation may be subtle. It might be 15 minutes. It might be uh, 30 minutes. It depends on the structure of the market. We may have a market that's already broken down. And now this market is retesting the breakdown uh, of that original breakdown heading into a new session. It can be Asia, it can be London, it can be New York. And that's where we get our breakout pullback continuation. Simple as that. There's no other, I don't care what anybody says. That's as simple as I make it. And that's all I'm looking for. Uh, it works for me and it makes money and I don't care about making things super complicated. I understand which trades can be sized into and that's what I'm looking for. So we have a market that breaks back inside of Thursday's high and forms a peak formation high in the gap time heading into Europe. We get a one, two, three. A move up, a vertical move up for 45 minutes and then breaks down is a peak formation high. Again, peak formation high in the direction of the peak formations. Gap time, peak formation high into the peak formations. It breaks down towards our low of the day. We already had a break in structure. We're back inside of Thursday's high, right? They've triggered, they've triggered breakout traders. So remember what happened on Friday, we had longs, day one longs, triggered into the market, right? The break of Thursday's high. Their stops, most likely, on the day itself, were down at Friday's low. They may have moved them up higher um, when Asia put in the higher low. They got stopped out. But false break reversal that fails heading into the U.S. session, we get a 15-minute false move into the peak formations. A broken down market, 15 minute false move above the quarter level for 15 minutes, it breaks down. Second 15 minute bar starts. The end of that first half hour, there's our bear pin hammer in line with the trend, the trend trade on the inside at numbers. One bar stop. Some traders may have taken the original engulfment. I know a few people emailed me and said they shorted the Canadian rate in that first, second 15 minute bar. It doesn't matter. Remember what I've said before. Once your thesis is confirmed, where do I get in? I get in anywhere above the numbers as best fill possible with a stop above the high of the day. I don't go and sit there and go, it's a, uh, you know, uh, put names on everything. I'm looking at the clock and I'm getting in because my thesis is, target is, right? Friday's low. Friday's low. Why? Because we have breakout traders in the market and the market's failed. So the init initial impulse breaks down and takes out the low of the US session. Now we're at the New York open and we have news on the calendar. What do we get? What do we get? One, two, three to double zeros, a breakdown on the news candle. Okay, we get a breakdown on the news that takes traders vertical. So all I can do now is trade back in line with the trend on a first bounce trade. We get that at 1720, which is 10, 1020, 1021 uh, New York time. Okay, traders who shorted that, even though you're down low, it still gave you 20, 25 pips, 20, 25, depending on where you got in, 20 to 25 pips, but a zero stress trade, but you're down low. Obviously on the last level of the, the blow off, we've already triggered the previous day's low. So would I size into that? No, but if I was trading that down low, I'd be looking to nail and bail, take the money and get out, shut it down. We're getting towards the end of the 12 candle window. But point I'm emphasizing is clean textbook setup. 
three pushes up, breaks back down. Peak formations are up, one push, two push, three pushes, breaking down into the gap. It's a first bar trade heading into the session. For traders who traded that first hour, they got 50 pips before we even got to the New York Open. A great trade. Thesis is rock solid. They've already locked in the high of the day. You can only go short. You wait for the pop-up. You're in the market. You're targeting yesterday's low. If you're not out before the news or on the news, this is an example of where the news catalyst acts to complete the trade. I'm out of the market. I'm done. Get off the screen. Crude gave a fantastic 100 pip move, and I'll just talk about that. So we have a market, uh, again, peak formation. We're going vertical. First hour sets a high and a low. We have New York open. We get a peak formation high that has broken outside of the, the range of the day and it pulls back and makes a low of the session, a peak formation low. Pulls back. Second hour opens and revisits that low and goes sideways at consolidation. Now again, look at your charts. Second, uh, The second hour opens and we get our little pin hammer after they push into the peak formation low. Some traders took the long trade, second hour, for a 100 pip explosive move back in line with the original trend on the day, pushing higher. Three peaks, breakout pullback, again shorting into the low of the session. They made a high, they made a low, second hour opens, they traded back into the low and went sideways in consolidation, pin hammer engulfment at the numbers for a 100 pip move. Thesis is the same for every trade. Peak formation, retest, failure. Peak formation, retest, failure. Peak formation low, retest, it fails. Explosive move back in line through the high of the day. We get towards the end of our half hour and New York opens and proceeds to go higher. One push, two pushes, three pushes, end of our 15 minute bar, peak formation high, they retest it, it breaks down, they retest the peak formation, go sideways, engulfment, doji pin hammer for the short trade for early traders up top. The high of the day, the thesis is, is they locked, the, the high of the day that's locked in. This pin hammer is a dead giveaway. Your three levels of rise and you've got a pin hammer into the high of the day. Guess who's caught as soon as they break down? Anybody who chased that trade long. But we had news and uh, with, with an oil, I consider it the least likely to react on news. Just my own opinion. Can't really substantiate that. But we had thesis now, high of the day locked in. They break down, they pull back, creeping trend down. After the news, market continues to, to creep. We have a market that has gone vertical in the second hour. We have breakout traders in at the quarter level at 75. So they're in the money and they haven't been stopped out yet. So you've heard me reuse the phrase, who's in the money? This bar right here, this pin hammer that we talked about, second hour, the traders who went long, that to me is the beginning of the pump. The pump because I know in oil nobody gets a free lunch and so I know there's going to be a dump and I'm waiting took an early feeler up top but when they went vertical you'll notice right before they go down they get the vertical at the half hour mark one two three engulfment engulfment one two three in a broken down market lower lows lower highs we have a peak formation on the way down Okay, peak formation, peak formation pop up, goes lower, one, two, three, engulfment. I have a one bar stop and I'm in the market for a move back down to where that began. If it stumbles around the pin hammer or goes sideways, as I've talked about, if there's a second bounce and a consolidation, I would exit the trade. This one went straight down through to the low of the session for an easy 100 pips. A great trade, simple. Just a matter of being patient. And again, when there's news in that U.S. session later like that, I'm almost assuming it's going to be a third-hour trade. Uh, 
big part is never chase this stuff down low. They will jam you in and do an explosive move, even if you're in the right direction. Do not get caught chasing stuff in the creep. They will get you down low. That vertical move can blow you out if you have any size. You think it's going to collapse right through, and then bang, here they come later with the easy money trade right back through the low of the day, the low of the session. Gold had the all the footprints to be a day one runner. Again, the peak formation high. So we had a peak formation low on Thursday. Why is that a peak formation low? Because we went lower and then continued to go higher. It was a day two, right? But when I start the new week, I look for peak formations, and we had peak formation highs. So remember, I've talked about the day zero setup. That's the peak formation low, the peak formation high. Pull it back inside, trend the market. That's the explosive parabolic setup. Peak formation low, peak formation high, consolidation, trend continuation trade. That's the trend continuation trade. The only issue again today was that we had news on the calendar. So we had the explosive breakout trade and gain something talk about with Peter Brandt is geometrical range expansions. It's not a new, nobody discovered that. It's been around since the beginning of classical charting. We have a one, two, 300 pip box. We could put a measuring expansion, one full expansion of that range as a possible target. We've gone 50%, whether or not this market will continue, no idea, but one and a half expansions of that range is is a pretty decent uh, target on a larger box like this. So again, you can read Edwards and McGee, you can read Schaubacher, you can read Peter Brandt to study classical charting. Those methods are over 100 years old. Nobody just thought of those. So again, we can zoom in on gold and see there's a bit of a gap here on the news. So again, the first bounce opportunity is I'm waiting for 15 minutes. We get three pushes down into the breakout, the double reversal railroad track engulfment for the first bounce opportunity in the next 15 minute cycle for an easy 100 plus pips straight in line with the original explosive breakout. So the first bounce is always about following the explosion, not a vertical stop hunt with three pushes for a reversal. That's the vertical explosion. Then a pullback continuation. First bounce, I only take the first bounce. The further away that you chase the bounces, they could be profitable, but you also run the risk of buying or selling further and further away into the third level and getting trapped. I'm looking for the first bounce opportunity. This was a great first bounce trade on gold today. S&P, we had a possible day one on Thursday because we had volume that went up above the previous day's high in Wednesday night and reversed. So again, false break reversals. You, you need to study where your previous highs and lows are. Lo and behold, we broke Wednesday's high, uh, sorry, Tuesday's high on Wednesday night, and then one push, two push, three pushes. That would be peak formations up, which tells us if we're heading into London, we can only trade in one direction, correct? Don't counter trend the peak formation. It breaks down in to the London session and we get our one, two, three up. Peak formation up for a nice London trade short, 250 pips. Peak formations are up. The market pushes up from the low of the day in London. One push, two pushes, breaks down on news and a one, two, three into the New York open for a nice explosive move for 500 pips down. Day two, day one, Monday night, sorry, uh, Wednesday night. If we're inside, again, we're inside of the previous day's low, I look for three peaks. I'm only trading the US session and I'm looking for a three session setup. There's our head and shoulders, our bro break in structure in London. Peak formations are up but they bring us down to the low of the day at the New York Open after the news. So now our thesis is one push, two pushes, and a third push up into the high of the day through the high of this session. 
peak formation is up. How do we know this? We don't until it gets there and how price behaves. So there are traders who went long in the New York session and there are traders who in the northern northern hemisphere that were looking for the high of the day opportunity for the all day fade into Monday morning. Peak formation low on a Monday morning below the previous day's low. So Thursday, Friday, Monday, volume below Friday's low. We have trap volume below Friday's low. There's my day one. My thesis is already I'm looking for longs into the New York session for a possible retest back to the peak formation high or to the level 50, 500, somewhere in that area if we were up top first, but the market trades down into the low of the day before breaking structure in that first hour. Continues to go higher into the beginning of our second hour, 15 minute false move. And then the reversal, which gets traders shorting it down into the New York Open. New York Open's on the little bull pin hammer. One, two, three. Again, this is a 15 minute chart. And I'll just say this for the hindsight naysayers out there. You're going to see the same things over and over again. One, two, three breaking structure, timings, understanding that New York opens at 9.30 New York. We had news on the calendar. I can't take that. If I can't take it because there's news, what am I looking for? I'm looking for a first bounce opportunity. And there it is. Continuation trade after the first 15 minutes. Bullpen hammer in line with the explosive move. Thesis being we're going back to the high of the day. This trade followed through for traders who were long after that news release at 10 o'clock New York time. So process is the same every single day. Peak formations, high and low, day one, day two, day three. Am I inside? Am I outside? When New York opens, where am I at? Am I at the low of a, a retest of a peak formation for an explosive squeeze, long or short? Is it a trend trade? We're inside. They've already locked in the low of the day. I'm looking for the trend trade opportunity. I need a peak formation low to be going long. I can't do that. There's news, explosive news. Thesis being made, we're targeting the peak formation from Friday night. I'm looking for a first bounce trade. Simple as that. I'm not making it complicated. Keeping it simple. Start the week off strong. Hopefully you already have done that. We've, we're going to get great movement. We've already had a great movement. It's Monday. So... Uh, hopefully you've started the week off on a good note, traders. Keep it simple. Lock in the money. When you're finished, walk away. Don't keep trading. If you really start to really understand this, you know that these markets move in the equity sessions. There's plenty of money to be made one hour a day. Master your craft. 1% better every single day. How good can you get? Have a great day, traders, and may the markets go with you.